the 16th selection in the 2021 NHL draft will be made from the MSG Training Center in Westchester, New York, by New York Rangers President and General Manager Chris Drury. Chris? The New York Rangers are proud to select from the Flint Firebirds, Brennan Othman. <laughs> The left winger is gone. Sam, what can you tell Ranger fans about Brennan Offman? They're going to be really happy about him because he plays with a little bit of edge. I'm here with Flint Firebirds forward and 16th overall pick of the New York Rangers in the 2021 NHL draft, Brennan Offman. Brennan, thank you so much for taking some time to chat. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for asking. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, right off the bat, congratulations. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, I mean, what a feeling being selected in the first round. Maybe you can describe what that, that feeling's like. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just an unbelievable feeling. Um, it's just all of us that work so hard to be drafted, I think. I think in the first round, second round, third round, fourth round, and so on. I think it's just so special for any of us, right? And um, you know what? First round, it's obviously something special and you have to work hard for it and uh, you got those other draft picks. I want to want to take your spot as well, right? But um, it was just an unbelievable feeling. Uh, we enjoyed it. It's it's great, and I can't wait to get down to New York and and get started. Awesome. Well, I know last time we spoke, uh, the draft was. I think we were like three weeks away from the draft, and it's kind of quickly approaching. And I think you felt you were feeling a little bit nervous just because of how quickly it was kind of coming up, but. Once you're watching and once you hear them just say like Flint Firebirds, I think you know your name's coming at that point. And then those nerves kind of quickly turn to excitement, right? Yeah, I think the whole night you have like a a, a good pit in your stomach and a nervous pit in your stomach. Uh, you just get nervous and you get anxious and you get excited. And um, once you hear that, once you heard uh, Chris Jury say Flint Firebirds, I think everyone in my house jumped up and I was still sitting on the chair because it doesn't hit you just yet. And um, it was just an unbelievable feeling. And when he hears, when you hear him say Flint Fiber, it's forward, Brandon Hoffman, it's just something special and something really cool and something I've wanted to hear for a long time. And, and I'm really thankful to hear that, uh, especially on that Friday night. Yeah, I think you're, you're absolutely right. I remember watching that and you were kind of just sitting on the couch when every, everyone jumped in. So I can totally understand how that didn't like settle in right away. Uh, but yeah, it looks like you were surrounded by a, lots of friends and family that night. What did what did the rest of that weekend look like? I guess once you're drafted in the first round, you can kind of just relax, uh, relax and watch the rest on Saturday, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you, like you said, I had lots of family and friends over. I had lots of uh, Don Mills buddies over uh, Friday night, and um, it was great to celebrate with them. You know, I've been playing with, I've played with those guys for three years, and we all became pretty tight. And um, I wanted to celebrate with other guys, but uh, other guys we get drafted that night and, and the next day, so they couldn't come. But um, it was it was great. And then the following, the next day, Saturday, we had more uh, family and friends over just to say congratulations, kind of a pop in and say hello. So um the, the side the friday and saturday was was great and then sunday we kind of just took it all in and spent some time with just my my family here at the house that's great and uh did anyone from the rangers organization reach out to you afterwards once you kind of got through all like the bombardment of messages that you must have had uh, who from the organization reached out to kind of to kind of welcome you yeah uh obviously chris jury reached out and and he obviously said congratulations and all the staff scouting scouting staff that uh, reached out to me and in the interview process that i had with them uh they all reached out and um cool moment was ryan strom texted me and reached out to me as well and um obviously he played in the ohl and and before me obviously but you look at highlights and you see him in the ohl and it's just pretty cool and now you're in the same order organization as him. So it's pretty special. It's a cool moment. And it was awesome when he texted me. Oh, that's great. What a, what a moment. Uh, I mean, we kind of spoke about this a bit already, but getting chosen in the first round after the year that's been, how do you view an accomplishment like that? Just like after kind of getting through all the adversity that everyone had to face. Yeah. I mean, with a year not playing hockey for a lot of us, uh, I was thankful enough and a couple others were thankful to go over overseas and, and play, but those other guys that didn't get a chance to play, it's just, 
you know what you can see that it took a toll on them and and uh it took a toll on their on their year and you know what that's for me that's it's okay I guess right I mean it's not the end of the world like I said first run's great but after I after being here name called in the NHL I think it's just an unbelievable unbelievable feeling but uh really thankful that I was able to play a little bit at least and um have a decent year to to be able to go on that Friday night like I said yeah I, I can imagine so you are the this offensive specialist uh you like to put the puck in the back of the net you're a playmaker you can score goals and you play with a little bit of an edge uh we know the New York Rangers have lots of young talent uh but what makes this team such an exciting spot to land uh, you know, I think it's New York City. I think I think it's just probably one of the greatest arenas in the world, if not the greatest arena in the world. Uh, you know, Madison Square Garden. I mean, just saying that, and picturing yourself playing in front of those fans and and playing with those guys on the ice, like I said, um, is going to be unbelievable, right? You got so much there. You got the Knicks, um, the the Yankees, uh, the Giants, right? You got you got everyone there, right? It's just and the Jets too. I mean, it's just unbelievable it's going to be so cool and so fun and um I, I honestly I can't wait that's great now uh, as we mentioned before in the absence of the OHL season you did have the chance to play overseas in Switzerland uh somewhere your dad and uncle have also played in the past how would you say you grew as a player from that experience just just matured I think I think I just matured as a player and you, you realize you love the game even more. And I obviously I, I love the game. And I love playing the game. And, um, but once you go over there and you play with men and you play with professionals and they want to keep playing every day, it's just, you realize that to love the game more and how special the game, game is and how lucky enough is to play the game. And, um, that's how I kind of grew as a player and as a person, uh, most importantly. Now, one thing you said is, um, it's your hockey IQ that really stands out. It's something you can't teach and you just have a really good mind for the game. Maybe you can just tell us a little bit more about what, what makes you such a threat on the ice. Yeah, honestly, I just think that like, like you touched on the IQ, I think I'm a very smart hockey player. I think that, uh, I just, I just see plays happen, uh, slowly than others. I think, I think I can see maybe two or three passing lanes when others maybe can only see one. Right. And I just feel like my hockey IQ and, and being able to, to realize and, and game management, I think, and realizing who's on the ice with you, who you're playing against um, is really important. And uh, every, any, anything, stick positioning, anything. I just think that that's all something to do with IQ. And um, I think you can teach it as a kid, but now when you get older, you can't really teach it too, too much. So um, that's kind of why I think my IQ is one of the best part of my game. Awesome. Now you obviously had a strong rookie season with the Firebirds. How did playing on an older team with guys like Ty Delandria really help you prepare for the NHL draft process? Yeah, I play on that older team. Uh, it was great. You think everyone goes in there thinking, like I said earlier, that they're going to play a lot, but when you're on an older team, it's it's the time that you won't play a lot, but it's the time to learn. And uh, sure, it would have been maybe nice to to play a little bit more like some other players have, but maybe those players didn't have an older team. They didn't get to learn from players, and they didn't get to learn from experience like I did. And I learned from experience. I learned from older players, a uh, great coach, um, and I learned from them a lot. And, yeah, like I said earlier, I would have loved to play more, but I loved learning from them and, and learning the process of becoming a professional hockey player. And what would you say you were able to learn from guys like uh, Brant Clark, who you've played played with before, a former teammate of yours, or someone like Mason, Mason McTavish, who's going to, you know, they're both going through the same thing as you. McTavish, you lived with for a bit overseas. Um, and playing with, the, playing with those guys on the U18s team, what were you able to learn from them, just kind of going through the same process? Um. Honestly, we didn't really talk about the process, uh, the draft process, any of us actually at the U18s or, or anywhere uh, whenever we were together. We kept it so casual. We kept it so cool. And um, we never really talked about the draft, to be completely honest with you. But I think one thing I learned from all of those guys with, you know what, with those two guys, with uh, Shane Wright and Francesco Pinelli, Chase Stillman, all those guys from, from the OHL that I play against, even the WHL guys, but you just learn to compete and your competitiveness level just, just drives higher and higher and higher. And, 
you know, even if you're doing a two on two game or you're playing two on two and it's best of three, you still want to win and you want to see the other guy's bags get on the other side of the ice. And uh, that's what we love. We love doing. And um, you just learn to be more competitive and, and have a more drive to, to win in the world to win against your, your peers. Awesome. And I guess sometimes it makes more sense not to fixate on it too much. Right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, speaking of the U18s, I've been asking kind of the same thing to all your teammates. How important was that tournament for you to be able to showcase your skills in a year without an OHL season, without, you know, without a top prospects game? Yeah, it was, it was definitely really important for all of us. I think not just, just, not just myself, but for all of us, I think that, uh, I think going out there and winning gold obviously was something special and we all wanted to do it because Canada, we haven't won since 2013 and uh, we wanted to win. We wanted to be the best team there and hockey Canada did a great job putting the team together. And uh, we had some unbelievable players, some great talent and all of us were, were we all of us played a great tournament and um, all of us showcased themselves. And I think everyone's draft stock just rose after that tournament because we, we played so well and we clicked so well and, um, it didn't matter who you were, your draft stock did rise and, um, you can see it in, in players where they got picked. Right. So it was just an unbelievable, uh, unbelievable tournament and very thankful as a part of it. Um, and yeah, just, you know, a year where no one's really been playing regularly, what does skating away with a gold medal at that tournament do for your confidence heading into the draft? You know, that's a tough question because it just, you're too focused on the gold medal and winning. I think, I think that once you win, once you, once we won that gold medal, I don't think any of us thought about the draft. I don't think any of us thought about where we're going to go or, or who's going to go the highest or, or any of that stuff or who's, how many players, you know, first round or second round, third round or whatever it was. And I don't think any of us really thought about that. I think all of us thought about just putting that gold medal around our necks and celebrating and, and hugging the coaching staff and, and the support staff and um, all of that. I think, like I said, we, none of us really talked about the draft or, who the best player was on the team by, by any means. We just wanted to focus on the, on the, the task at hand as I was winning a gold medal. No, that makes sense. Um, and just to wrap things up, uh, what's the message you have for New York Rangers fans? We just can't wait to see you get started. I'm just excited. I'm excited. I can't wait to get down there. I can't wait to train. I can't wait to show you know, all you guys what I'm made of and uh, how I am as a hockey player and as, uh, as a person and, uh, you know what MSG is going to be going to be a great feeling to play out one day so I can't wait awesome well thanks again uh, for your time Brennan wish you all the best this summer moving forward and another huge congratulations thank you very much